Jasper Johns is an American artist who was born in Augusta, Georgia in May of 1930. He came onto the art scene in the 1950s. The art world was searching for something different than the purely abstract style of the time. John's early paintings of flags, maps, and numbers met this need. The art world of that period was accustomed to seeing abstract art that had deep meaning and expression. John's work was very simple and without meaning. John's focused more on the process of creating the painting than he did on the subject of the painting. When you look carefully at John's flag painting in this example, you will immediately notice the materials used underneath the paint. You can also see his heavy brush strokes. There's a rhythm to his work that lets you see how he puts the paint onto the canvas. The brush strokes and the materials used under the paint gave the painting texture and depth. John's called his artwork fact, meaning that there was no question what the painting itself was. The painting was clearly a flag, a map, a number. He left those looking at his art completely free to come up with their own stories about what they are seeing and what it means to them. This brings us to our project today. Using Jasper Johns as our inspiration, we are going to create a painting of a flag. As you cover your canvas with newspaper, photos, magazine pages, etc., I would like for you to select some things that are meaningful to you. Use the materials to tell your story. When you look back on your painting years from now, I want you to be able to see something showing through your paint that reminds you of a special thing or a special time in your life. Be creative. In the spirit of Jasper Johns, take your time and enjoy the process that will go into making your flag. Don't get hung up on trying to make it perfect. This is more about the experience and enjoying your creative time. In the end, you will have a one-of-a-kind piece of art that is special to you. To begin the project, select the cover of an old vinyl record. Using your scissors, you're going to cut open the album cover. Carefully cut along the fold at the top and the bottom of the album cover. Do not cut the side. This allows you to open the cover to create what will be your canvas. You can construct your flag on either side. I prefer to use the printed side and allow some of the original print and photos to show through the paint to become part of my painting. Gather your newspapers, magazines, old book pages, etc. Jasper Johns and various other artists of the time liked to use newspapers and other similar materials as the foundation for their paintings. They would apply their paint in a way that allowed the print to show through and select areas. We will use this same technique in our painting. Tear out the pages and photos that you will use from the print media. You can also incorporate other materials and various techniques into your painting if you wish. For example, I do a lot of woodworking, so I'm going to place pieces of sandpaper in the upper right hand corner of my work. Another hobby that I enjoy is fiber weaving. As a representation of this, I tore a map into strips and wove them. Position your items on the canvas. Play with the design until you get a good idea of how you want it to look. Grab the glue or Mod Podge. I personally like to use Mod Podge as my glue, but if you're doing this project with numerous participants, good old Elmer School glue is much more economical. The next step is applying the glue. Use a paintbrush or foam brush. Cover the first part of your canvas with glue. 
I recommend that you work in sections rather than covering the entire canvas at once. This will allow you to take your time making sure you get each piece exactly where you want it. You're going to paint over the entire piece once the glue is dried. Make sure to glue down places where the paper, photos, etc. overlap. You do not want any loose edges. You will quickly notice that your piece is not completely flat. This is a good thing as you're going for texture. Texture was an integral part of Jasper John's work. Once the glue is dried, use your scissors to trim the edges of your canvas. Lay your canvas flat and inspect your creation one more time to make sure that there are no loose edges. At this point, you have completed what is referred to as a collage. A collage is defined as a piece of art made by sticking various different materials such as photographs and pieces of paper onto your canvas. Gather your paints, something to squeeze out your paint on, some paper towels, a small glass of water, and the paintbrush of your choice. Beginning with the white paint, cover your canvas with a thin layer. You want this layer of paint to be thick enough to be able to tell that you've actually painted it, but not so thick as to completely cover up the words and the photos underneath. While the paint is still wet, dip a paper towel in the water, squeeze out as much as you can, then use the damp towel to gently wipe away some of the paint from the words and photos that you really want to see once the painting has been completed. While the white paint is drying, you want to decide where your red stripes will be. If you want to stick strictly to Jasper John's style, you will want to keep your stripes as evenly as possible. To do this, use a tape measure to mark off where the stripes will start and stop. Make sure the marks on one side of the canvas match those on the opposite side. If you want to be a bit more creative with your painting, you may choose to forego the marks altogether and simply paint your stripes freehanded. This is your piece of art, so go with your vision. I often find when I'm working with young children that they like to have fun with it, and they'll often make up their own number of stripes and put the stripes where they would like. Once the white paint is dried, we will move to the blue box of your flag. If making a realistic flag, you will want to make sure to line the bottom of the blue box with the top of the correct white stripe of the flag. This would be the top of the eighth stripe down from the top of the flag. In my example, I use painter's tape to mark off the box. A word of caution though, even painter's tape will pull off some of the glued down paper when removed. If you're concerned with this, simply mark off the box with a pencil and skip the tape. Paint the blue box. Then carefully remove a bit of the paint with a damp paper towel if you wish to allow things to show through as we did with the white paint. While the blue is drying, you can begin to paint the red stripes. In my example, I again use painter's tape. A quicker and cheaper option when working with a group is to mark off the stripes with a pencil, then connect the marks from one side to the other on your canvas. Or the stripes can simply be freehanded for a more loose design. Once your red stripes are finished, you can use a clean damp paper towel to remove a bit of the red paint if necessary to allow your words and photos to show through. I find, however, that most red paints are transparent enough that removal of paint is not needed. Once the red paint has dried, it is time to paint on the white stars. In my example, I used a stencil. This is optional, however. In keeping with Jasper John's flag painting, I wanted to make mine reflect the look of his actual flag as much as possible. When working with children, I find that they like to do it their own way, often randomly placing their stars. A few large stars here, a few small stars there, or stars of different sizes and unique shapes. As you will see in some of the examples at the conclusion of this video, I tend to just let them have fun with it. Once the stars have been added, you're finished. 
Use a permanent marker to sign your work of art. If you wish, paint on a coat of sealer to add additional protection to your painting. This step is optional. In my example, I use the Mod Podge. It's water-based, it's easy to work with, it dries in minutes, and it's non-yellowing. You now have a complete, one-of-a-kind work of art that represents a piece of you and your creativity. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and have had a great time creating your flag painting.